Hey guys, I had an idea this morning that I wanted to execute on and I wanted to create a little video for it. Um, the other day I saw a video by What's Inside, I'll link to the video down below. They cut open a flight data recorder or a black box and you could see what was inside. And it was kind of interesting, you know, it had this, this thick metal case and inside that was this like gray, like clay type matter. And then inside that was this like green foamy stuff and then inside that was the computer chip the memory chip that you know records all the flight data and it needs all that stuff to be able to withstand you know forces of an airplane unfortunately crashing and you know in case the the plane catches fire or it lands in the ocean it, ne it needs all that material in order to protect the data that's inside so recently i received an io safe brand hard drive and if you've seen these they're these big bulky hard drives and they're designed to protect your data in case of a fire or flood um, for a certain amount of time. It's not, you know, if, if you leave it in a fire for hours, it's not going to save your data. Um, I think it's rated up to about a half an hour. So after receiving this IO safe and watching this video about the flight data recorder, I was thinking they're probably pretty similar technologies. And the, the IO safe, it's a big, bulky unit like it's big it's heavy you can't pick it up with one hand it's only a four terabyte drive um, but it's it's big it's robust so i was thinking these are similar and how cool would it be to deck out my new io safe in the colors of a flight data recorder the one they showed in the video was orange and it says you know flight data recorder on the side on the other side it says do not open which they did um i'm sure it voided their warranty but what we're going to do is kind of replicate that with one of these IO safes and make it bright orange with black letters and make it look like an actual flight data recorder. And I think it'd just be a neat little piece to have in my office. So to start things out, we're gonna head to the local home improvement store and buy the spray paints and the colors that I need uh, to achieve the look that I'm going for. I got some orange paint, I got some black paint, I got some blue painter's tape, and I got some sandpaper, and that should be everything we need to create the flight data recorder hard drive. So the next step is going to be figuring out how to open up the hard drive without damaging it. Um, I'm sure it's going to avoid the warranty, that's fine. So the IO safe has this little hole pattern that's on the front of the hard drive, and it has this black mesh grating behind it, and it's you know an aesthetic thing, it looks, looks kind of cool. Um, the problem is I don't want to just straight out paint it like that because I don't want paint to get inside, I don't want to ruin anything, and I would like the contrast of having the grading being a different color. I think it's already a, a black, um, so that black coming through the orange I think would look kind of cool. So what I need to do is figure out how to crack this bad boy open and um, we'll go from there. So I didn't want to bore you guys with um, you know taking screws off, but I wanted to show you that there's the LED indicator light on the front of the drive, and it's just um, stuck on there with some double-sided tape. Um, it's pretty easy to pry off, but I just want to make you aware that you don't damage anything um, if you do try this. Now that I got the front panel off of the uh, hard drive, I noticed something that's kind of disturbing. Take a look. So here, here's the, the, the plate, and all I did is I just took the screws off, slid it off, and if you look down in here, that's moisture. I don't know why that is. This hard drive, I just had it a couple days. There's no reason why there should be moisture, and it's underneath this plastic. Like, it, I'm not getting wet. It's just it's underneath there, so I don't know what the deal is with that IO safe. Okay, so I've, I've moved the back plate off of the, the hard drive area, and I'm noticing even more moisture in here. It's kind of crazy. Um, this side has it kind of really bad, and it's sealed in there, so I don't know if it's supposed to be that way or what, but it's kind of weird. Um, what I wanted to point out here is, so there's the, the board. I don't think that's a control board. I think it's just for the different switches and the power and stuff like that. These cables running off of here are the only cables going into the hard drive area. 
and it goes into a little like ribbon style cable mount in here and it just has this zip tie on there to hold that in place so i'm going to cut that zip tie with some scissors and that way i can remove this cable and get the whole thing separated okay cut that zip tie now the cable's free of the board uh, looks like there's only these three screws that hold this board in place so we're going to get rid of those real quick okay we got the we got that control board out the only thing i'm going to do now is mask off this nameplate like a serial number nameplate type thing i'm leaving this switch in place because it was just kind of being a little bugger to get out so i just connected it from the board um, on the board here the that power switch connected into the slower one which has an sw1 underneath it i can't get it to focus on that that's for switch one and then the the led that that we just connected earlier connected to this top one up here and then that big ribbon cable thing connected here. Here, I just wanted to take a moment real quick to show you the board. I was taking a look at it while I was waiting for some paint to dry and, and figured I'd show you what I think is going on here. Um, you know, so you have the USB 3 connector here and um, all these little chips here, you've got an integrated circuit over here, another one over here, and a crystal, looks like it's a 20 megahertz crystal. Um, the crystal is for keeping time for the computer chip so it can keep everything synced. Um, everything in here is the USB 3 controller that, um, you know, it's helped transferring the data and uh, changing it so it can read to the drive and, and it's, it's an interface, USB interface um, circuit there. Um, then you have the power over here, which comes over here to this switch. We've got um, four capacitors. They're 220 microfarad, 16 volt capacitors. Um, and this little guy, I don't know if it's a step down um, like a buck converter or if it's a step up I'm not sure but th this is um, the this is the part here that's controlling all the power that's going into the hard drives and this is controlling all of the data and USB um, going in to the hard drives as well to mask these uh, to mask these items off I'm just gonna put some tape over there and then take a razor blade and just cut along and then remove the the rest of it so I can make sure everything here gets turned orange bit I'm gonna do here is masking off this switch and then we'll be ready to sand and then paint. Okay here's the stuff I got. I got some uh, black and orange spray paint. I wish they had flat orange but they didn't. Um, so I got some flat black and some glossy orange uh, spray paint and then I got a sandpaper here to take down the original finish. Here's some sandpaper to get in between the coats that I put down and some blue tape to kind of mask everything off. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, and it might not be the easiest thing to figure out, um, has these little feet on there and the screws are hidden within there. Um, I took a knife to kind of just pry those open. Um, and then I went over the, all the metal parts um, with some sandpaper. This was that 220 grit sandpaper and um, I, hit, I hit all the edges with that pretty good just to kind of scuff it up to get the, the gloss off of it. Uh, once I was done with that, I took some uh, mineral spurts and um, put that on towel and wipe that off. That helped get rid of any of the dust as well as any um, oils from my fingers. Um, and here I am painting. It looks a little uh, heavy there on the black, but it really isn't. It was a pretty light coat. Um, I'm not gonna show you all the different coats of paint that I put on there because you know, I did several, um, but you know, I just took it outside and after sanding it and hit it with some, some black and orange. Um, the orange piece you see there, that's the top and the bottom and the front pieces. And the other piece that I'm painting right now, the black, I'm painting the, the sides black because I want the text to be black. And I'm not exactly sure where I want the text to be at, so I'm just painting the whole sides black. And then I let it dry for an hour or two um, in between coats. And then went from there. So at this point, um, you may be wondering how I'm going to get the lettering on there. Um, I have a vinyl cutter, so I'm going to design and cut out the letters to the size I want and then I'm going to apply that vinyl directly to the object and then over the black paint and then I'm going to paint it orange and then remove the vinyl and it should let the you know, act as a mask and let the black lettering um, come through so that's what I'm doing here I'm just waiting for some paint to dry.
Okay, so I've hit this with a few coats of uh, flat black paint. Um, this is the side piece. It's going to get a it's going to get a, a coat of orange paint once I apply these decals to it. Um, the thought is I'm going to apply these decals. This one says flight data recorder. This other one says do not open. This will go on the other side. And I'll apply these, spray the whole thing orange, and then be able to take these letters out and you'll have nice black letters against the orange paint. Um, so that's the thought. So I'm going to apply these. painted the whole side black um, is because I didn't know where I was going to be placing the uh, the decals you know if I wanted them high or low I figured I kind of want them high um, so that's why I painted the whole sides black I didn't bother painting the back um, because it's everything's gonna be covered in orange anyway but that, that was the reason I did the whole sides as even as I could was just so I could place these decals wherever I wanted and uh, I didn't have to worry about it uh, so just really quickly I'm just showing you there's the uh, the decals on there and I'm putting light coats of orange and I'm gonna do several coats I think I did you know five or six coats of orange to you know make sure that that blacks all covered up um, so this first coat looks a little blotchy but it's it's the first coat done really lightly I don't want any runs or anything so I'm just gonna keep hitting it with more and more orange okay I've got the pieces painted um, and now I'm gonna remove the the decals and we'll see how this looks. So at this point the paint is still a little tacky so I'm trying not to touch the paint. Um, you know if you, if you wait till the paint is completely hardened it becomes very difficult to remove the vinyl. So it's, it's at the point where it's tacky I can touch it. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. You know, I'll start leaving fingerprints and stuff like that. light data cord and the other side says do not open and we're gonna fix that part now forgot to take off uh, the parts on the back here so I just undid I just took the tape off the switch and I'm gonna take them off the, uh, the labels back here okay now the only thing left to do is put it back together so we'll put it back together make sure it still runs and looks great now this is the hardest one to take off because this is taking off tape off of an actual label instead of um, you know just off the off a piece of metal so I gotta be careful with this one looks like it's coming off pretty well though boom nice and clean one thing I did that I didn't explain earlier is there's some double-sided tape in here that 
holds on the plastic grates. There's these plastic grates that go in behind the uh, the holes, and there's this double-sided tape in there. And so what I did to protect the tape from getting overspray on it is I put blue tape on it, but I put the sticky side up. So the back part of the blue tape is on the, the double-sided tape, and so I should be able to pull this off pretty easily, and it should protect the double-sided tape underneath. Alternatively, if I had some double-sided tape, I would just apply new stuff. I, I'm just out, so I'm using that. I do, I do have some double-sided um, foam tape, but I don't know if that's going to screw up putting this back together if I have a, a thicker foam tape in there. So this is what I did to kind of get around that. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you guys is, it's going to be hard to see because it's black, but I reinstalled the zip tie. So once I plug in this cable, I can zip tie that back down there. Um, if they put that in there for a reason, I'm going to continue to do so. I imagine the reason they did that is just if this gets bumped around during transport or whatever, um, perhaps this cable is prone to just coming dislodged from that board and then, you know, then they have to send it back and it's a whole deal. So they just zip tie it on there. I mean, I don't expect to be transporting this or moving this drive around very much, but I'm just gonna reinstall that zip tie. Another thing I did that I didn't show you guys earlier is I masked off, Just this is the bottom part of the drive. Um, it's a part that's not gonna be seen, and I just didn't wanna waste the time you know, painting it and having to let it dry and all that stuff. So I just, I, I masked off the bottom and I didn't paint that part. Another reason is this is gonna be sitting on carpet, and after a while, you know, if the, the paint isn't totally cured, it might start sticking to the carpet and stuff like that. And so it just, I didn't want to deal with that, so I masked it off. So there's my flight data recorder. It's all painted up and installed that open it's gonna live here under my desk so it's kind of a shame that you know no one will really see it other than in this video but it is pretty cool uh, you can see that the LED works just fine I lined it up perfectly um, there was a little trick to lining up that LED that is I, I shined a flashlight in this side all the way through and then I was able to see on the back side as I positioned the LED exactly where it needed to go. I just followed that little pin of light and placed that in there. Um, but it works fine. It's connected to my PC. I'm doing some maintenance on it now but it's it's right here and it works fine if we can focus. Um, yeah, and I've got all my files on there and it's opening and it works great.